All right, I guess we are live now, allegedly, over here on YouTube and now on Instagram. It said I had a poor connection. Don't know how you can be connected on one and not the other. It's probably a server thing. It can't be that complicated. But the point is this. Welcome, everyone, to this month's live stream extension of the Just Me with our R. Campbell program. The reason that we are here tonight is, as you might have guessed, because we have behind me here a canvas. Yes, we're going to be painting, not because this is necessarily what I wanted to do at this month's live stream, but because that's what the lovely people over on Twitter chose to do for this month's live stream. So Twitter folks, if you voted in this poll and you voted for painting over making music, first of all, thank you for voting in that poll. And second of all, curse you, because I really wanted to do music. This will be my second time painting ever, excluding, of course, things like finger paints in kindergarten and excluding things like any number of painting adventures that would have been thrust upon me while in public school. Other than that, I painted one other time. And do you know what it ended up looking like? I sure do. I'll share that with you now. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's special. That's really great. Um, I was just trying to get a feel for these paints, and I certainly got a feel for them. I learned after the fact that there are, in fact, quite a few techniques you're actually supposed to employ. It turns out you don't just get to uh, well, you can. No one's going to stop you if you want to. But ordinarily, when working with acrylic, or so says the internet, you don't just kind of put it on the canvas. You want to get some water involved, which I know those of you on YouTube can see the water. If you're over on Instagram, hello, there is some water just out of the shot. It's the problem with that vertical, you know, setup that they got over on Instagram. But you want to have water involved. We've got our canvas set up here. It's actually just a sheet of, I don't know, I don't know the technical names for any of this stuff, people. Bear with me here. We have this set up. It's actually not on an easel because I do not own an easel. Had to get creative. These are the quarantines after all. So I had to make sure that I found some way to hold up this paper and so it won't move around on us. I have used masking tape to adhere this to newspaper, which is adhered to a Buddha board. If you're not familiar with the Buddha board, it's kind of like painting, but you do it with water. And after you've painted on there just a little bit, it dries very quickly and evaporates. So if you screw up, no one's going to know about it in about 30 seconds. You've probably seen me do some speed run videos of using the Buddha board for fun, maybe on Instagram. So we're going to paint tonight. I have the paints all ready to go. I get I got as much of this setup as I could in advance but I did want to kind of walk you through the paints that we're going to be using because, you know, that gets us in the frame of mind for what it is we're hoping to achieve. So what did we do tonight? Well, I got us some mostly really bright colors. I personally am a generally subdued person, blues, uh, purples, greens. Those are pretty good for me. I'm good for a brown and a gray, but we want to make this a bright occasion. And so what are we working with? Well, we have crimson red. Cool. Crimson red. We'll also be working with just, just lemon yellow. Lemon yellow. Cool. We, of course, have vermilion. This one's nice. This is a good, I'm feeling pretty good about this color. I don't know what we're going to use it for, but I'm, I'm excited that it's here. And I did, I know this is breaking up our pattern here, but I also got some black. Why did I get black? Well, in case I want to make some of these darker. Probably could have got some white out also, but you know, eh, it just felt like a lot. So what we're going to do now is I did in advance go ahead and poke a hole in the tops of these so you don't need to sit here and watch me struggle and panic as I realize, oh my God, I can't get this paint out. It still might happen. But what we will do is we're going to take our little tray here. You can see from the last time it was used, some blues and purples left in there from the monstrosity that you saw me demonstrate for you only a minute or two ago. But it's all dry, so we don't need to worry about that. I'm actually just going to take one of these. I'm going to take our colors. We're just going to drop them in there, just a little drop. Probably not going to need a ton of paint tonight. 
don't know what we're going to end up painting. Uh, I'm not exactly a Bob Ross. I certainly don't have the hair for it. And I don't generally have the demeanor for it either. So what are you going to do? We're just going to get a little dab of this crimson red in here. You can see it's about, oh, that much. Instagram people, you can see it's about that much. YouTube people, you got that. We're going to go ahead and put a cap back on this because safety first. By which I mean, you don't want paint everywhere first. We're going to get some vermilion in our tray next. Oh, yeah. Here's that vermilion. Let's see how shiny this is when it comes out. You can see it's it's a pretty, that's a pretty shiny one on the outside. Let's see how well it matches. Ooh, that is, it's almost neon. Golly, look at the contrast between those two. It's almost orangey. Where I'm from, they call that two shades short of orange. Maybe not vermilion, but hey, I don't name colors. People just tell me what they're called, and then I'm stuck with it. All right, so we've got our crimson red, we have got our vermilion, and we are going to get our lemon yellow. Let's go ahead and get that set up in here. This is gonna be, ooh, wow, geez, these are vibrant paints, dang. Cool, here's our, our yellow. You can see a little, little dollop of the yellow in there, wonderful. And then we'll get the black in there, just in case, you know, we decide we're gonna use it. We don't need to go crazy with it, but we'll get a little bit set up. And then it will be time, imminently time anyway, to actually do that painting. So, got a little dollop of black. I'm not gonna bother to show you the black because you might be surprised to learn that the black just looks like what black looks like. Now, someone out there who's very technical and knows their colors and is actually an artist is probably raging about that because there's like a bajillion shades of black. And, you know, that's fine. Uh, oh, someone has told me that the audio isn't working over on the Instagram feed. And I apologize for that. I'm going to let it run just in case it was a, a user thing. But, um, you know, I wish I could help you. Otherwise, I don't want to hold up the... the uh, this for too long. If you are over on Instagram, I would tell you that you could head to YouTube and check this out, which I encourage folks to do. We'll see about that later. I'm going to keep it moving for the people on YouTube. If you join Instagram and it does happen to start working, awesome. We'll see what we get. Anyway, we have got the old paintbrush. Turns out this is an important part of what it is that we are trying to do. We also have that jar of water I was talking about. We got our paint ready to go. We have some paper towel laid out for reasons that will become apparent as we get started here. So why don't we go ahead and give that a shot. So let's see, what do we want to start with? I'm feeling, feeling that vermilion. Let's get a little vermilion on the brush. Now this is where I made my big mistake last time when I was painting the monstrosity as we will just refer to it. I was just getting paint on the brush. I was more or less just taking right to our canvas. Now allegedly, this is not what you are supposed to do. You are supposed to go ahead and actually, you know, dip it in this water. You do a little dab. So why don't we go ahead and do that? Just, just a little bit of water. Get some water in there. Very cool. Good. And then we have this paper towel set up. We're going to go ahead and give it a boop, boop. We still have some on here, as you can clearly see. There's the orange. Got the orange over here. That's fantastic. And then it's time. What are we going to paint? Let's just see what happens when we take this brush to the canvas. We're gonna start up here. Oh boy, my hands are shaking. Folks, it's almost like I'm nervous. Oh wow, so I might not have got enough paint on there. Or I diluted it too much. It's looking a little bit like a question mark. So, you know, if you're into that, that's pretty cool. So, we have a little shape that's come out here. My lesson learned on this one is I either didn't have enough paint on there or I got a little too much water in there or some combination of both. That's my guess based on my very uninformed opinion of how this stuff works. So someone has left a comment on YouTube. They say, no pressure. Thank you, Kim. I appreciate you keeping it uh, real with the no pressure situation. That's good. Uh, it also looks like, Kim, you might've hopped in the Instagram feed Feel free to let me know over on Instagram if the audio is not working for you too, because then maybe I have to discontinue the Instagram feed for now. We'll stick with YouTube. But anyway, we have one line up here. I want to get, I think I want a little more consistency out of this vermilion here. So we're going to go ahead and give ourselves another dip. 
and allegedly now that the brush is wet, so I learned in the one YouTube video I watched on this, hey, you want a, you want a moment of meta? In the one video that I watched on YouTube, guys, I did my research, okay? I know more than the artists now because I did my research. I watched one video on YouTube and now I'm an epidemiologist. Cool. All right, let's go ahead and touch up our magical question mark looking thing here. I'm a little hesitant to just like jump right in because, you know, we want to keep it consistent. It does have a nice uh, gradated fade to it. Maybe we give ourselves, we're going to, we're going to switch it up. We're going to go in a slightly different spot here. We have this little guy coming in. And cool. All right. So I don't know. We broke up our question mark a little bit here. That's something. Anyway, I don't know. Let's see if we get, we're going to get the brush a little wet. We're going to get rid of some of this paint. Maybe we drop in a new color now. So what color are we going to use next? I don't know. Let's check the comment section over on YouTube again, want to make sure, oh, audio wasn't working over on Instagram. Well, folks, I'm really sorry. And it actually looks like there's no one on the Instagram feed right now. We're going to disconnect that. I'll sort it out later. Sorry, Instagram. Bye. All right. Now I can actually focus on you folks over on YouTube and we can straight up see the comment section, which is fantastic. So we have this to get started. We have this going on over here. That's great. We're going to get some of this lemon yellow. Lemon yellow. All right, we got a little water on there. I probably went a little hard on the water again. Didn't learn my lesson from last time, but what are you gonna do? So um, let's let's go with a circle. I feel like a circle is probably pretty good, huh? Oh no, we have a little red in there still. I didn't clean the brush enough. Oh, look at that. All right, so it's a little burnt, burnt yellow but a nice little, nice little shape. It gives it a little character. You can see actually, I know that it's probably not showing it in the same amount of detail as it is for me because I'm here and I'm a person and you're on the far side of a digital series of tubes. But inside that yellow, we do have a little bit of this like burnt quality because of the orange that slipped through, the vermilion if we're being technical. I don't think it looks terrible. I think it gives it a little more character like I said and we'll see what we get as this progresses. So I'm actually, before I go ahead and get too crazy, let's add a little personality up here, all right? We're gonna give this some, some dashes of yellow. Ooh, and we got a little of that, got a little of that orange showing up in there still. Um, using the side of the brush, kind of overdid it. I made it a little more crowded than I wanted to, and you can't really see it too well from where you're sitting, but you know, You'll be able to see a picture at the end. I'll go ahead and bring it a little closer for you. The nice thing about acrylic paints, because I'm an expert on acrylic paints now, is that they dry really quickly. So I'll be able to handle this. When I say handle it, literally handle it at the end and bring it a little closer for you. But this is what we got right now. Some yellows, let's take a look. What do we think we wanna add in here next? I want just a really egregious line of crimson, just some, deep, dark, awful, single straight line of crimson. All right, so that's what we're gonna go for here. We're gonna really clean the brush this time though. Oh, look at that, we must be really cleaning it because the water is not as clear as it was before, which I know everyone on YouTube can see the water. Folks on Instagram could not. Hey, that'll be a fun thing to troubleshoot later is to figure out why the audio would not work on my phone, you know? What are you gonna do? Figure it out later. So I wanted to get that really egregious line of crimson in here, okay? So that's what we're gonna go with next. We're gonna really coat this up. I want it to just be the glommiest, glommiest red. It's like a, you can, oh yeah, you can see it shining in the light there. It's got some good texture. All right, here we go. It's almost like a, color of a berry or something like that. All right, so that didn't quite come out as I wanted it to. Part of me wonders as well, I'm working with a single brush here, but 
I do have a couple others at my disposal. I would like to see something that gives me a little better coverage, but you know, what are you going to do? Uh, so we're going to try and finish off this line, make it as pretty as we can, which is not that pretty for being honest, but Hey, we'll say that it has character, right? Character. Look at all that character we've brought to this line of this line of crimson. Cool. All right. I don't know. That made, oh, that really changed the shape of it, didn't it? Didn't that like really uh, change the shape of what we're looking at completely? I almost now, it feels like we want to get into this space up here, but it needs to kind of flow. We need to find a way to connect the, the straight line to like the curviness of everything else that we have going on here. And I don't know what color we want to give that. I wonder about... Yellow is going to feel too symmetrical, right? Because then we're going to end up with this situation where we just have the red over here and a reddish orange, you know? Okay, so Kim has pointed out in the chat that this reminds Kim of a, a reddish orange Trogdor. Things we need to know about Trogdor. My original plan tonight was actually to try to sit here and do a landscape painting I was going to give you some nice, we're going to get the sky, we were going to get some mountains in there. I was going to slowly start painting thatched roof cottages. And then I was going to draw an S and a more different S with some consummate Vs. And we were going to end up with a Trogdor. But I think that's way beyond what I'm ready for right now, as you can clearly tell. But I think there's part of my brain that's trying to get into Trogdor mode. So yes, I totally get it. Maybe, oh, this is what we'll do. We'll call this like Picasso's take. Yeah, because this is Picasso-like, right? We'll call this Picasso's take on Trogdor. That gives us something to shoot for, okay? Let's think of it this way. This here is the fire, and it is spewing down directly from Trogdor's, uh, you know, mouth, his jaw, his maw, whatever. And then we've got a little bit of tail action here. We've got a little bit of, I don't know what we're going to call that yellow. We'll leave that open to the interpretation of the viewer. But let's stick with that. I'm inspired now. Let's let's bring it back around to what I originally intended to do here tonight. So we're gonna get rid of the crimson on here and I wanna go back to my orange. And we're gonna give our, our Trogdor just a little bit more shape. Abstract Trogdor with R.R. R. Campbell. A new web series brought to you by also just R.R. R. Campbell. Okay, let's get that vermilion back in action. Because uh, we have our S, and we kind of have our more different S already. So how do we want to fill this in to give ourselves a little more Trogdor without giving too much? We're going to get angular. We're going to get angular and also blend it into to the smoothness. Okay, so here we go. Straight line down, and we're going to cut back. Okay. Straight line, cut back. Okay, so it's giving us a little bit more shape, and I like that. It's really, uh, it's coming together, okay? We're getting a little more Trogdory. Oh, that's what that is, right? So the little dashes in the back here are like the beefy arms sticking out of the back of his neck there, so to speak, but it's just done in like this nice little shade. This particular Trogdor does not have uh, the beefy arm, but instead has this sort of like feathery apparition-like uh, appendage hanging out back there. Yes, it's Cubist Trogdor. That's the way to think about it. Very good. Kim's all about it. So we've got our Cubist Trogdor coming together. What we need now, though, are uh, the wingalings for the wingaling dragon. We're going to need our consummate Vs, consummate. And then we, we're going to give it some eyebrows. I'm a little afraid, though, about the eyebrows because I think the only way to effectively put them in there is going to be if we do it in such a way that it makes it look like an angry Trogdor. And I don't really want the angry Trogdor. I like this idea of, like, the fun. This is the Trogdor that you bring to parties, and he's not crushing cans and, like, getting too out of control. This is the Trogdor you bring around, and everyone's like, oh, yeah, that guy is pretty cool. Whatever that means. Cool. Um, so we've got our orange. Is there anywhere else that we want to put vermilion before I set it aside? I'm going to give it just a little more shape in here. A little more shape. I don't want to get too definitive. I want it all to be very 
Suggestive of the Trogdor. That'd be a good title for this. Suggestive of the Trogdor. But it would give away the ending a little bit too much. We'll see if we could go with that title. Um, okay, cool. This Trogdor definitely needs some feet. Let's do the feet next. The feet feel pretty feasible. I want to do the feet in yellow because I think it's appropriate that the feet match the big beefy arm sticking out of the back of his neck there. So let's um let's go ahead and clean this up. I really don't want, well, I guess our other yellow does have some vermilion in there, so I shouldn't clean it up too much. Let's keep it consistent. And we're gonna get ourselves a little yellow. We're just gonna come down here. And uh, to make this cubist, I don't wanna make it seem so straight up like tiny little legs. Mm, what can I do to give it a, a unique take? It's gotta be angular. There we go. Do we just give it one leg? Does this Trogdor have one leg? That doesn't feel right. I think it needs, oh, but what do we, oh, here's what we do. We're gonna get a little orange in here. With all apologies to, there we go. Now this one's gonna have a little orange, maybe too much. All right. Let's see what happens. Okay, I gotta be honest. With the two little legs down there and one being yellow and one being red, this color scheme is starting to feel very McDonald's to me. And McDonald's didn't pay me for this content. And so I'm a little upset about that, but you know, we'll see what we can get here. Uh, and I did see Kim get another comment, Trogdor the conversationalist. That's the guy that you want at your party. Trogdor the Burninator, I mean, sure, he's he's fun, but then like everyone graduates college and they kind of move on and they spend a lot of time finding themselves and figuring out what it means to be a person in this complicated society in which we live. But Trogdor, he's still burninating and he's like 25, then he's 27, then he's 38. And the next thing you know, Trogdor is 52 years old and he's still burninating. And you see him at those reunions once in a while, he just kind of shows up through a friend of a friend. And he seems like he's putting on this front. Like he's a really jovial guy. He's still out there doing what he loves, right? But you know that in those eyes, behind those eyes and in the deep tissue of that big beefy arm sticking out of the back of his neck right there, he's sad. In his heart, he's sad. Poor Trogdor the Burninator. That's why we're going to stick with Trogdor the Conversationalist. So we, I just, I am so upset about our McDonald's situation down here. I want to fix that. We're going to try to fix it. And this is going to be a big, this is a big moment. This is either going to fix it or this is going to make my worst nightmare come true. Okay. We're going to go ahead and just go right over the yellow. Oh, definition. Oh man. Definition. I'm a little upset. I didn't do yellow first on the other leg with the orange over it. That really adds something to it. You'll, you'll see it up a little closer later. Though, while we have this ready, uh, I've got orange on the, all right, it's time for the wingling. We're gonna do the wingling, okay? I think it's time that we pull up this crimson again. The crimson's really been underutilized so far. I think it's definitely great that it's in there for the sake of the Burna Nation, because even though this Trogdor is a conversationalist, we have to imagine that one of the things Trogdors have in common, aside from their physique, is also the same burninating tendency, right? Uh, whether you're the kind of Trogdor that burninates the countryside, you might be the kind of Trogdor that burninates the peasants, you might be the kind of Trogdor that burninates the thatched roof cottages, whatever the case might be, they're going to have some sort of burnination going on. Whether their emphasis is on that completely or not, it's just kind of what they do, right? Some of them grow out of it, like we said, but then Trogdor, the true burninator, next thing you know, he's sitting on a porch somewhere, he's like 65 and his tiny little legs are giving out a little bit, his wingling doesn't quite flop around like it used to. He can't, he can't use it to fly because, you know, that would totally support the weight. And then he's wondering what happened to his life. And it's all gone. It's all gone. And all he ever did was burn it. We don't want to be that Trogdor. We want this Trogdor. So let's give this Trogdor the little wing. Uh, let's see here. I don't want to get too much paint on because I want it to be kind of light because this is a deep color relative to the others we're using. 
So let's give him a wing, but we want the, we want the wing. Oh, this is what we're going to do for the wing. I just saw it. Okay. Wah, wah. How does that look from a distance? Oh, that's pretty good. Yeah, that's our wing. Okay. So it's not a lot, right? It's not as deep and like pulling you in as the burnination that we have on this side of it, but we have the shape of a wing, a wing, a wing. And that feels like what we want here. So I'm trying to look now at how all of our colors are balanced. And I want to get this, this crimson off the brush because I really want to get some yellow down here by the feet. That feels like a pretty good way to go. I'm looking at this painting and I'm thinking about also the consummate Vs. The consonant Vs are very important because as we know, if you don't draw consonant Vs specifically, Strong Bad will come into your studio and use his BMW lighter to burn your artwork down. That's not great. Uh, we do need to include them, but I have my concerns about their inclusion because what I'm liking about this right now is that we're really working with the open white space of this. We're letting, it's kind of like, God, I hate that I'm gonna use this joke, but it's like jazz, right? It's the notes you don't play. It's the space that you leave open for interpretation. And I'm afraid if we get in here a little too hard with our consummate Vs, that it might crowd out everything else. We're gonna have to be really particular about the color that we choose in there too. But first, we are gonna add just a little bit of yellow down here. Oh, I got some, got some crimson in my yellow. That's okay. Let's see what happens here. Um, get it real light. Just, just a touch. There it is. You would never even know. You would never even know. Got to be careful where I'm swinging this. I could have poked Chardor right in the eye. Okay, great. This is cool. I like this. I'm a little less upset with all of you who voted for painting now because we got something that I'll frame this and you'll see it in the background if future just me with our R's or something like that. That would actually, oh, that would be really nice, wouldn't it? Isn't that, wouldn't that be cool? Okay, so here's the thing. Every month when we pick something to do for these, it'd be neat if we could pick something that we could always kind of have in the background of future shows, because then the background's gonna grow. I was just telling Lacey this this week about how it would be really cool if every month I added something new to that bookshelf that sits behind me. Interestingly enough, Everything right now is set up on that bookshelf. Anyway, if I added something fun, but it could now actually be something that we make during this. I don't know what it would look like for if we had chosen music, for example, but you know, uh, we'll find a way to get that represented some way, somehow. And this has to be, excuse me, hiccups now. This is what, an eight by 10, I hope? Oh, it's a nine by 12. Okay, well, we'll see what happens when it comes time to frame that. But uh, we can't talk about framing too much yet. We still have some painting to go here. We were talking about the consonant Vs. We're talking about eyebrows. I don't want this Trogdor to be super angry, but I do think we need a little more yellow in there. Um, boy, and I just, I just don't know. We're gonna get a real light touch of yellow, okay? And we're gonna go. Oh, that's great. You probably can't see that on the, um, the stream. But that's, you know, that's pretty good. I don't know, I'm a little worried that that gave him an antenna look. Oh, bummer. I don't want him to have antennas, antennae. But, you know, it's there, can't do anything about it. Um, so let's roll instead with a couple consummate Vs. We're gonna put some consummate Vs on this. And I think we're gonna reach a point where it's really important that we let ourselves know it's okay to be done. Uh, because what happened with my monstrosity piece, this guy here, is that at one point, this actually was a pretty cool looking like black hole spiral galaxy situation that I had going on. But then I just, I was trying to fill time. And so I went really intense and I used up a ton more paint. And though this has some really neat texture in there, if you can have an opportunity to see it up close, it just, I should have stopped a couple of times along the way and I regret not stopping. And the, the eyebrows that we've added up there are kind of, they're feeling like maybe they shouldn't have happened. I'm gonna find, I'm gonna see if I can shape them a little differently here. We're gonna do, you know, eyebrows, all the rage, right? So we're gonna shape these eyebrows a little differently and see if that helps. 
Oh, it's making it worse. Okay, hang on. We might be able to recover here. I was literally just saying that I needed to stop. And I tried something and I made it worse. I am I'm bummed. That's that's a bummer. The thing about painting, especially when you are me and you don't really know anything about painting, is you don't realize that it's not like writing where I can sit here and I can write something out and I can give myself a whole draft and then go back and change it. That's on the canvas now. Ah, but what are you gonna do? It's there now, we have to live with it. So it's kind of like Chardor the Burninator, now at 72, he's feeling very alone, still spending a lot of time on his porch. He used to really enjoy feeding the birds, but due to deforestation, um, in his area in order to build a new shopping center. A lot of the birds have since left the area because a lot of the wetlands have been replaced by luxury apartments. And he just happened to be sitting on a piece of land that was zoned differently when he originally bought the property. And he's too old to, and maybe feeling a little weak. I shouldn't say old. He's just not a very healthy 72 year old. And he's just not really feeling like he can go to city hall and advocate for himself anymore. And the city has delivered some paperwork that says, you know, we're going to be seizing this property. It's in the greater good. It's time that we develop this land, just like the surrounding land. So Trogdar, the burninator, is not even in a position to really feed the birds. And he's just watched his whole life go by. And he says, wow, I really wish I had a second shot. Well, kind of like I wish I had a second shot at not doing those eyebrows, Trogdor, the burninator, it's not going to happen for you. But it can still happen for Trogdor, the conversationalist, okay? So this is what we're going to work with here. We're going to give ourselves those consummate Vs. We're going to see what they look like. And I hope they look okay. I really hope they look okay. And when the consummate Vs are there, if we feel pretty good about them, we're going to set it aside. We're going to set this aside. We're about halfway through, you know, the hour that I normally like to do for these. I did grab another thing, a canvas, just in case we got through this really quick. I don't know. We'll see if we get onto that. But let's, moment of truth stuff here, folks. We got to concentrate first on the consummate Vs, okay? Consummate knees, consummate. It's time to make strong, bad, proud. Wish I had a picture in front of me of the original Trogdor. I think, I don't know, we're gonna see. All right, here we go. Everyone's holding their breath. How do we feel about those? How do they look from where you are? But well, you can't see them super great. It's a bit of a bummer. They're real light. They're real light, but they're certainly there. They give you something to look at. And I feel like, I feel like this might be it, right? Is this it? It feels pretty good. There's this white space in here. But just because there's white space doesn't mean it needs to be filled, right? I feel like that's a trap. If we're thinking about this like writing a novel, it's like when you're at the stage of being a writer where you feel that like you don't have enough story to get to a novel length. And so you add in a couple of scenes that are just devoid of anything resembling tension or conflict. They don't really serve your plot. They don't show character advancement. They're there to fill space. I feel like that's the equivalent of my desire to go in here and touch that up. We also have a comment in YouTube again. Thank you, Kim. Feels good, man. Good. Well, if it feels good, man, to the folks who can see this, feels good, man, to me. I'm really happy with our Trogdor. I feel really good about this Trogdor here. I'm going to clean up this brush. Clean, clean, clean up the brush. Oh, we got a lot of paint in this brush here. This almost looks like a fun grapefruit drink right now. Pretty cool, huh? Don't drink it, though. Probably not good for you. All right. Cool. Well, the brush is mostly clean. And we have our Trogdor. So now we face a critical decision. We do have some paint left. About 35 minutes of the way into this. We got a couple people who are really hanging in there for this stream. So thank you for hanging around. 
is it time to do another quick canvas or do we call it at this and save that canvas for another time for something else that can go on the wall behind us during the Just Me with R.R. Campbell episodes? I'm going to go ahead and say that this feels good. Maybe that's something I'll talk about in this week's Just Me with R.R. is knowing, I think I talked about this. Let me know in the comments if I didn't talk about this in recent episodes, but did I talk recently about when you want, like when it's okay to say no and when it's okay to be done? I don't think I did. Maybe we'll talk about that this week. I had another idea for something to talk about also. It's kind of eluded me right now, but I'll be recording that tomorrow. It'll come out on Thursday, just like all the other episodes have. Thank you, by the way, everyone, for your support with last week's episode. Lacey did say that she had a nice time for that video. I think she said as much at the end of the recording too, but it was really nice to have her on. We'll see about doing maybe monthly features of other people. I'd really like them to be in-person interviews, so that might be challenging right now. I don't want to get too much into the remote interview game because it's going to start feeling a lot like the I am uh, the excuse me the R. R. Campbell Rights Cast. Not quite the direction I want to go with this, but we'll see. For now, though, hey, this, oh, you know, mm, ah, okay, no, I have to know when to be done. Got to know when to be done. I'm looking at it, and I had an idea, but no, it's time to be done. All right, well, thank you, everyone, for coming out. Thank you for tuning in to Just Me with R.R. Campbell on YouTube and on Apple Podcasts, wherever you listen to podcasts, whatever the case is. Thank you for your ratings and reviews, for your emails, for your engagement here. It's a trap is a comment in the YouTube chat. It certainly feels like one. Thank you for that kind of engagement for your emails. They've really been, the volume of them is going up every week and the engagement in those emails is not just superficial stuff. So thank you so much for your words of encouragement there or in YouTube comments, whatever the case is. This has been really nice to see our small community that we have here growing and feeling more engaged and feeling more positive. Things like this, I hope gave you a nice outlet tonight or whenever you happen to be watching this. It's something to watch come together. And uh, hey, live unscripted, live unedited, and live unafraid. And paint. Paint once in a while. We can't forget to paint.